Joining us from Washington is Bishop Bakram Gassis. He is Bishop of Sudan's El Obey Diocese. Bishop Gassis, it's good to see you again. And we saw a war waged against the South for 22 years and finally an independent country in July 2011 and the world's newest country. Many Americans uh, thought that the fighting came to an end, but the government of Sudan is still killing people in places like the Nuba Mountains and those buffer areas. Tell us what's happening. Bring us up to date. Well, the Nuba Mountains was not included in the comprehensive peace agreement which brought South Sudan to its independence, unfortunately. Even though the Nuba uh, liberation movement was part and parcel of the liberation movement of South Sudan. But uh, now they have got to fight for their uh, self-determination and Khartoum doesn't want that. Um, why, why is that, Bishop? Why is the government of Sudan waging war against the people of the Nuba Mountains in South Sudan? Mm. And we've traveled there quite often, and uh, they're lovely people. Why are they doing this to them? Because they consider the Nuba Mountains geographically as part and parcel of the north. Uh, and if the north, they say that they are Arab Muslim, how can they expect the Nuba, who are genuine Africans, with their own traditions and culture and, uh, and, and, and religions uh, and uh, to be part and parcel of the North who says that the North is Arab Muslim. They are not Arabs, uh, the Nuba, they have, they have their African culture. They are not all Muslim. Yes, there are Muslim Nuba, but they, they live in peace with other, other creeds. Uh, there are in a family you will find you have, you have uh, Muslim, you have Catholics, you have Protestants, you have Africans of tradition and belief, but they all live in peace. Religion does not become a barrier in their social life. And the government so, has tried to Islamize them over the years, maybe the impose Sharia? Yes, they want, they, they want to Arabize the Nuba. They want them to give up their, their, their arms, uh, which they had all these years and the, the liberation movement of Donuba to be absorbed by the northern Sudanese army and Khartoum said no. In fact, I have seen a, uh, a transmission by Omar al-Bashir who said if we don't agree to arrive uh, to a peaceful solution through the ballot box, we will take it through the bullet box. When I saw that, I immediately said this is a declaration of war. Okay, now you're talking about the ballot box. Recently, there was a referendum in the city of Abia, which is right on the border there between North and South, uh, and they voted to become part of South Sudan. Will they ever be allowed to secede from the North? Uh, this is another big issue, you know, because uh, uh, up to some years ago, the, the Abia area was considered part of Southern Kordofan, which is in the North. So. Uh, if you look at the people of Obabie, they are genuinely Dinka uh, tribe. Uh, they have nothing to do with Arabs. They are uh, Africans. They, they are, there are no Muslims there except few people. The majority are either Africans of traditional belief or they are Christians. So Khartoum is, is finding it difficult to give up Abia because Abia is floating on oil. But if you look at the people themselves and geographically, uh, Abia area is south, not north. And they want to be in the south and they prove that at the ballot box. They want to be with yes. their fellow tribesmen in the south because the Dinkas is the biggest tribe, Nilotic tribe in, in southern Sudan. And and Abiyé, Dinka, who are known to be as Ngok, uh, Dinka, they, 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 are, they, are, they are Southerners. They well, are Dinka people. Let's talk a little bit about the humanitarian work that you're doing. I know you have a hospital in the Nubas called Mother of Mercy. Tell us what difference that hospital is making for the people there. You know, this hospital is, is an, uh, an inspiration from God. I, I never thought of building a hospital in a war zone. Yes, I accepted to be in a war zone to bring in uh, what do you call water through through uh, drilling water with, with with a rig which was given to us generously by the United States, and to to start the schools. But unfortunately, that was not 
the aspiration of the people of of, uh, of the uh, liberation movement. They said, yes, Bishop, we thank you for bringing us the water. We thank you for bringing us the, per the personnel, the sisters and the fathers. But what we want, two things. One, we want a teacher's training center because we don't have enough and qualified NUBA teachers for the primary and the secondary. Secondly, we would like to have a referral hospital because other, other people of goodwill, uh, they say, we will build for you a dispensary. A dispensary does not meet the need of the people. If a woman needs to have uh, what you call surgery, uh, cesarean, uh, to get the baby, where is she going to go? She would die. And, 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 and I thought that that, was, that request of the hospital was too much for me. But I, I thought over it. I told him, I'm going to pray over it. I'm going to think of, uh, over it and I will see what I can do. It took me about almost a year before I would say, okay, I will take that challenge and I will, I will start the hospital. And that's how it started. It, it, it became a beacon of, of hope to the people because uh, not only uh, the, the usual maladies that we, we have got to look after, it became also a, a place where all the wounded because of the aerial bombardment are coming. It was meant for 80 inpatients. Now it is over 240. And I, and I know they don't have many hospitals up in the Nuba Mountains. I remember Absolutely. years ago, Operation Blessing and CBN partnered to bring a, a full clinic of medical supplies up. And I think Humedica was involved in that as well. Uh, but yes. the people said, oh, thank you. There's such a need for medical care there. Now, what about the spiritual uh, life of the people? How about the faith of the people? Is the church growing there? The church is growing, and it seems that when people realize that they are forgotten or seemingly forgotten, they, they open their eyes and they say, okay, if, God, if, if, if people forget us, God will not forget us. So when they open their eyes and they see the church personnel is there, not for gain and not for salaries, but out of love for them, they are volunteering and they are risking their own lives. Then they understand that the meaning of the, of the gospel is to love your brothers as you love yourself. They are there sharing the dangers of being bombed. They are sharing the isolation. They are sharing the heat. They are sharing the privation. And, and then now they open their eyes and they say, oh, here there is something that we should look at. And then they join the church. Yeah, in the midst of tragedy, um, many Muslims are actually coming to faith in Christ as well. Isn't that true? Yes, that's true. And you know what? Uh, it is also through their children. The adults join the church because the children go to school. They, 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 they intermingle among themselves. They come to in contact with the other Christian boys, and then they go to their parents, and they say, we want to go with these children, and we want you to come with us. And so they draw their own parents to the church, the children themselves, the students. But of course, the, the, the elders, they see exactly, as I said before, that the church has become their, their beacon of salvation. And Bishop Gassis, I can't allow you to leave us without talking about the treatment of Christians elsewhere in Sudan, like Khartoum. We've heard that there's been a mass exodus, there's intense persecution there. What can you tell us about what is happening to Christians in that part of Sudan? Well, uh, the, 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 the issue of, of putting, uh, you know, barriers and hurdles in front of the Christians has always been, but not to that extent. Uh, before the independence of the South, at least the presence of Southerners in the North, in key posts, helped us to go ahead. Now, we have none of them there. So now there is pressure not to get any more personnel, missionary personnel from the outside. There is pressure that areas where we have our, our, our shacks there among the, the, the people in, on the peripheries, they are taking them away from us under various excuses that they want to open a road, that this place is not surveyed and has to be surveyed. Uh, we don't have any more the possibilities of building churches anymore now in, in, in northern Sudan. So we have to arrange with what we have. I don't know. Southerners now are not looked up after favorably. They tell them, you are foreigners. You are unwanted here. Why don't you go back to your country? Likewise, for the Nubu are living up in the north, 
uh, they are going through a, a kind of oppression because they know that uh, the Nuba are also becoming rebels. They don't want to stay with the, with the Khartoum regime. And so they are also looked down by the northerners. The situation is becoming very grim for the Christians. To be a Christian today, it means you should have faith and you should accept the challenge. Well, finally then, what can we do here in the United States to help and how can we pray for them? I think uh, the, the main issue is to, to remember the suffering church of, 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 of Sudan uh, in particular and to help also us in, in southern Sudan to, to build these broken, broken brothers of ours because of the war that left a terrible imprint on them. So prayers, yes, it is vital, it is fundamental, but if we pray, let us pray in action. If we love, we love with, uh, with action. Prayers without action, they are dead. Prayers should take us to action, and the action is to offer a helping hand to our people, whether in, in, in northern Sudan or whether in, in, in the Nubu Mountains in particular, because now they are on the cross in a special way, because bombing is daily, uh, Khartoum government sealed all the entries to, to the Nubu Mountains, so no food, no medicine, no fuel, no nothing, no education. So it is only through, through the church that these things are, are, are taken from Nairobi or from Uganda, and we, we try to, to give hope to the people. And I, I would invite everybody to go uh, to, to our website if they want to know more and it is www.sudanbishop.org and that will show them the extent of, of our uh, activities and where they can help. Okay, Bishop Gassis, it's good to have you again uh, with us and we thank you so much for joining us, bringing us up to date and you and your people will be in our prayers. Thank you. Please, yes, I, I, I do trust in your prayers a lot.